The dietary recommendation to prioritize carbohydrates produced a veritable epidemic of obesity and diabetes. The idea that carbohydrates are responsible for obesity has been disproven several times. Resulting in what has been deemed by reliable researchers as one of the worst public health disasters of all time. I mean, yeah, obesity is a problem, but that's obesity, not carbohydrates. I'm dooming almost the entire Western population to a lifetime of catastrophic chronic health problems. Remember what happened? And yes, obesity does lead to a lot of chronic health problems. What happened the last time that government agencies applied their tender mercy to determining what the people they serve should consume? I remember. No one followed them. We were offered the much vaunted food pyramid, telling us to eat 6 to 11 servings of grains and carbohydrates a day, with protein and fat at the pinnacle, something to be indulged in with comparative rarity, if indeed necessary. Proteins and fats were right there in the middle along with milk products, just above vegetables. At all. That all turned out to be wrong. And not just a little wrong, but so wrong that it might as well have been not just wrong, but a veritable anti-truth. Something as wrong as it could possibly get. You can't conclude it was wrong if people didn't do it. Over 80% of persons aged 71 and above and over 90% of all other sex age groups had intakes of empty calories that exceeded the discretionary calorie allowances. In conclusion, nearly the entire U.S. population consumes a diet that is not on par with recommendations. The food pyramid was brought into being not least by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, that is, by marketers, not scientists. The first U.S. dietary guideline was a collaboration between the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the U.S. Department of Human and Health Services, and a group of scientists. For the second edition and then on, a separate committee was created that had no ties to any U.S. federal departments. The second edition and then on was also subject to being peer-reviewed. Sir nutritionists, with no shortage whatsoever of lobby efforts by those whose products ended up being promoted. No products ever got promoted in a dietary guideline. Companies promoted themselves as filling those guidelines, but the guidelines themselves did not promote any specific brand or product.